There is just something about a homemade roll that makes a meal extra special. These light, soft, and flavorful rolls are a perfect addition to any meal, but especially a Thanksgiving or holiday gathering. This recipe is easy and comes together quickly, and a great make-ahead recipe, as these rolls freeze well. To make these Amish potato rolls, you will need one egg, two tablespoons of sugar, one teaspoon of salt, three tablespoons of melted butter, one half cup of unseasoned mashed potatoes, warm, two to two and a half cups of flour, three quarters of a cup of warm water, and it's best if you use the water the potatoes were cooked in, and one and a half teaspoons of dried yeast. First step is to proof your yeast in one quarter of a cup of warmed water, and I'm using the water that the potatoes were cooked in, but you can use regular warm water. And now I'll put this aside until it gets bubbly. Next, add your salt to your flour, and using a spoon, just mix it well. And then we'll put this aside. Now we'll work on our potato mixture. I'm adding two tablespoons of sugar to the butter, one egg, and one half cup of mashed potatoes. And I'll mix this well. Keep mixing well until your egg and butter and sugar and potato mixture is nice and smooth. And now let's bring all these different bowls together, making a well in your flour. Add your proofed yeast, your potato and egg and butter mixture, and enough extra water to make a soft dough. Just using a spoon, I'm gonna bring this all together. As you're bringing your dough together, It'll be a, um, a shaggy dough. And I find that using your hand is really your best tool. And once you've got it all together, it's just time to turn it out onto a lightly floured breadboard. And we're going to knead it for three to five minutes. Our dough is formed into a nice smooth ball. And now it's simply a matter of transferring it into a lightly oiled bowl. Turning it once, cover with plastic and let it rise for an hour. Our dough has been rising for a little over an hour and it's beautifully doubled in size. So now I want to gently deflate it on a lightly floured breadboard, a little punch down, and just turn it out on the breadboard. Lightly flour the top of our bread dough. And I'm going to cut this dough into 10 to 12 pieces. I like using my pastry scraper and I'm just going to cut this dough into quarters. And then from the quarters, I think I'm gonna do 12 rolls. So each of the quarters into thirds. I've just lightly buttered our baking dish and I'm gonna put it aside Dump your dough, fold it over, form a ball, handle these gently, and just place them in the baking dish, and they really like to touch each other. I actually was only able to get nine in our pan, so I'll do the other three in a separate pan. These just need to be covered, and they need to rise for about an hour or one, until they're quite puffy. Our beautiful rolls have risen for the second time, and they're nice and puffy. And now they go into a preheated 350 degree oven for 20 to 25 minutes. Our beautiful rolls are out of the oven and oh, the house smells so good. And I'm just lightly spreading butter over the top of these rolls and then they'll be ready to serve. Why do we add potatoes to yeast bread? Science plays a huge part in baking. Different reactions between potato starches and wheat starches help increase the moisture content making for a super moist bread that is soft, it rises faster, and has a longer shelf life. And you won't taste the potato. The potato is there for texture. Treat your family to these delicious rolls and they will definitely become a family favorite.